Amy, are you still relaxing after Golden Demon? Yeah, I mean, as fun as it was, trying to get everything perfect was so stressful. I'm done with trying to paint perfection just for a while. Right, then you're really going to hate what I need you to paint today. Hi, and welcome to Bleeding Tree Gaming. My name is Amy, aka Warp Fiend, and today I'm going to be painting up an Emperor's Children Praetor for the Horus Heresy in a cool metallic purple scheme. My good friend Autumn Witch challenged me to paint this one and to come up with a scheme for an Emperor's Children Heresy army that's easy to follow but impressive on the tabletop. So while the Third Legion may pursue perfection in all its forms, I'm not going to spend too long perfecting this but give you a recipe that's quick and easy and you can expand it to a full army with minimal fuss. Without any further ado, let's get onto the piece and don't forget to smash that like button. As you can see, I've already primed this in black. I'm going to use some metal colour chrome to spray the whole mini. The metal colour range from Vallejo has some very interesting properties that can be very different to standard metallic paints that you might be used to. And if you've never tried them before, I definitely recommend picking some up. Because they're very thin with an extremely fine pigment, they're ideal for airbrush application like this. As with all airbrush applications though, you'll still need to use thinner. That chrome has given us this wonderful shiny surface to work on. I'm now going to mix a small amount of Scale 75 Ink Intensity Violet um, with some thinner and spray the whole surface of the model that I want to be purple. You can see how wonderful and rich this metallic purple becomes. Perfect for an Emperor's Children army. I tested out a couple of methods of getting this purple, including GW's new contrast paint, Luxian Purple, but I found that the contrast medium alters the finish of the metal too much, while the ink density violet acts as a lovely filter. If you're attempting to follow this paint scheme without an airbrush, instead of following these steps, I'd recommend mixing the ink density violet with the metal colour chrome before you paint it on. Uh, this way you can get the same smooth coverage but without messing up the metallic sheen. Now I'm going to start picking out all of the gold details. As a perfection obsessed peacock of a praetor, this fellow has a bunch of gilded trim and jewellery. So I'm going to use some necrotic gold from scale 75 mixed with a little flow improver. Next to base coat some other areas. I start by rebasing all of the other details in black, including the cables, straps and any areas I want to be steel. The cloak I'm going to base coat with some Zandri dust. Base the sword hilts in amaranth red. And finally the base details are getting an all over coat of knacker. I add some quick highlights to details like the red hilts and black cables, as well as using a mix of Zandri dust and knacker to layer up the cloak. I'm trying to get those transitions looking fairly smooth on this piece, so I use thin layers and glazes. I'm using an oil wash on this as I wanted to tie the whole thing together with a single red-brown wash. I mix up two parts Abtalung smoke to dark rust and thin it down with some odorless thinner. 
I'm just going to glop it on. An hour or two later, I come back in with a cotton bud with a tiny bit of thinner and clean up some of the surfaces. I particularly want to clean up the purple armour and the cloak. Now the oil wash has dried, it's done some of the work of a wash but I think some of the areas could still do with some additional washes to darken the shading and add some colour into the piece. I'm going to use Targor Raid Shade on the base to give it this lovely pale reddish brown tone. For the gold I use some Gilliman Flesh Contrast Paint mixed with a little of that chrome metal colour paint. I do this to try and limit the finish altering gloss effect of the contrast paint. It was an interesting experiment that I haven't done before and I'm pretty happy with the effect it gives. I think often painters can have a little bit of a blind spot when it comes to mixing metallics and regular paints together. While it doesn't work in all circumstances, sometimes mixing the two together can work way better than glazing the colours on afterwards. Particularly metallic paints with a fine grade of pigment like the Vallejo metal colour paints combined with a highly pigmented rich colour like the Intensity range can give you some fantastic results. I mix the two together here and use it to touch up any splashes on the purple armour. Then I mix in a little more of the chrome to get a highlight colour. If this mix is too thin and you're struggling to get accurate highlights, a little touch of Stormhose Silver or Scale 75 Speed Metal will thicken the mix a tad. In a similar fashion, I mix the chrome with some Imperial Fist contrast paint and use it to give a quick highlight to the gold parts. I'm going to use a quick glaze of diluted Imperial Fist to pick out the top knot ponytail. I then come back with Gilliman Flesh and just add some rich orange brown into the shadows. After a few finishing details, I'm going to finish it off by splashing some dirty down effects on the base. I use their verdigris and moss paints here, just in some random splotches. And that's the model done. So here it is. As you can see, I didn't push this model quite as far as I've taken some of my other ones lately. But it's a good fun scheme that you can bang out a whole army in no time. Purple has always been a favourite colour of mine and I think to a British person the first thing this reads as to me is the foil wrapper of a Cadbury's chocolate bar. So I'm counting that as a win. If you enjoyed this or have your own metallic tips or tricks please leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe to Bleeding Tree Gaming for more weekly hobby content. See you in a bit!